In Pit Lane is proudly brought to you by Dino Dynamics, your leaders in premium performance. And with thanks to the All Seasons Phillip Island Resort. Sedans provided their own brand of thunder earlier in the day with three very different car and driver combinations taking the wins. Graham Gilliland won the first race on Saturday in his rotary powered RX7, while Lee Ulhorn took advantage of a damp track Sunday morning to upset the more powerful cars in his under two litre version. But come the feature race and a dry track was all that was needed for defending champion Michael Robinson in the big V8 Monaro to take the win. A second place to Gilliland gave him the overall victory and the lead in the championship. Reigning champion Justin McMillan in the Lamborghini Gallardo won the two sports car races after their feature race was cancelled due to the storm. Mark Siemens in another Lamborghini was second overall, ahead of a great performance by 81-year-old Murray Carter in his self-built Corvette C6. The main talking point of the weekend, though, was the stunning debut of drag racer Tony Di Felice in his new Ferrari 458 Italia GT3. In his first ever circuit race, the top door slammer driver put the car on pole position. This spin at Honda in the second race was the only blot on his copybook for the weekend. Normally more at home behind the wheel of a blown top door slammer Camaro, we asked Tony what motivated him to race the Ferrari. It's been a, um, a long time coming. I've, I've always loved circuit cars. I've always loved Ferraris. Uh, I've always wanted to do it. And at, at, at this stage, um, I've been able to buy a 458 GD3 uh, race car. And I took the opportunity. Love the car, love the brand. And Door Slammers is, is about the team. Whereas this is about the team, but it's, it's, it's about the driver and doing laps, getting in a rhythm and enjoying that, that intensity in the car. Whereas the door slam is just intense for six seconds or five seconds, uh, and then the team get to have all the fun by ripping it apart and putting it all back together. So yeah, it, it's, it's, I've always wanted to do it as a kid. Despite having no serious circuit racing experience, De Felice did get some very expert training when he picked up the car in Italy. Um, when, you took, when, I, when we took delivery of the race car, um, they've got to do a shakedown. And once they do a shakedown, they said, you drag race that from Australia. Um, so we better have a good instructor for you. So I had Andrea Montemini, who's an ex-Formula One driver, um, as an instructor. And I took my drag racing helmet from, from Impact, which is the Darth Vader look. And they're all going, what's this? What's this? And uh, by the end of the day, we, uh, Andrea during the morning set a, a time of 149, sorry, 148.8. By the end of the day, he, he taught me and he, he told me what to do. And, I was 149.9, so I was, you know, a, approximately a second slower than him, and he just said, no, no, you're not drag racer, um, you're not a gentleman racer, you're a racer. So you enjoy this car, and we've brought it back here. I had Alan Simonson give me a few pointers. Um, Phillip Island's a ballsy track. It's just uh, the aero I've got to get used to, the, the brakes and, and the, the adhesion of the tyres is something that I've, I've got to get used to. Um, at the end of the straights, I'm normally used to pulling a parachute. So um, you actually got to get back on the gas and turn the steering wheel. So it, it's, it's a novelty, but it's, it, it is, it's really fun. De Valise is using the Victorian State Championships as a training ground to his ultimate goal, the Australian GT Championship. Hopefully they will allow me, because of my lap times, to participate in the Australian round at the GTs here. So uh, I think today's well, my first race meeting. Friday was the first time I ever ran on uh, wet weather tyres, so that was daunting too. Uh, that was exciting. Um, so well, yeah, I wouldn't mind doing the Australian GTs. The times that we're doing here are competitive to the front bunch, so yeah, hopefully that's a stepping stone.
With 39 cars on the track, the potential for chaos was never far away in the Formula Fords. But there were few incidents, just plenty of great racing as Jonathan Ventor edged out Caleb Rayner for the overall win. It was also a strong circuit racing debut for multiple Australian karting champion Dave Sarah, who came through to take third position overall in the Duratec class. Rod Ratchers led home John Spud Wood after three entertaining HQ races. It's said that in the event of a nuclear winter, the only things to survive will be cockroaches and HQ Holdens. Many a time have the powers that think they be tried and failed to kill off the veteran saloon car class. Yet far from being a dying breed, the HQ somehow manages to survive. In fact, with over 70 entries already for the HQ Nationals at Sandown in June, the class is thriving. One enthusiastic newcomer to the HQ ranks is former in-pit lane crew member and occasional fill-in host, Simon Thomas. Um, having a ball in the HQ series this uh, year. That's my first year in the racing series and uh, before that I was doing karting, as you know. And uh, yeah, finding your feet in the big cars now. So how different was it when you jumped in? As you said, you've done a bit of karting and suddenly you jump into this. Was it what you expected? Absolutely not, no. Imagine driving a 40-year-old taxi and trying to get it to turn. It uh, kind of wallows around a little bit, but eventually gets there and um, a lot faster. And um, yeah, not quite as responsive as a car, but good fun, yeah. The cars may be older than some of the people driving them, but they continue to attract new competitors and healthy fields. So, what's the secret to the HQ's success? Well, look, the HQ's, you can be in a car for five grand and uh, go and race. It'll cost you a couple of grand a year to run. Uh, we run the same tyres for the whole year. The engine only needs to come out every two seasons or so for a freshen up, unless you, of course, do have issues. Um, it is affordable for the average family guy to come race. Um, definitely about the same affordability as the level of karting that I was doing, so uh, anyone can do it. I'm Ariane Evans and I'm the Marketing, Sales and Service Administration Officer. The best thing about my job is the variety. The best thing about my job is manufacturing the best dinos in the world with the greatest team of people. The best thing about my job is the professional approach they take towards the product. Customer service is so important to Dino Dynamics because our customers are our lifeblood. Customer service is second only to product quality. Dino Dynamics is smart. Dino Dynamics is dynorific.